Hey there, everyone. It's episode 58 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's episode, all about Jackie Chan. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some awesome apparel and accessories for you traditional martial artists out there. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more about them over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Today's episode also has a full transcript with lots of photos, videos, and links on the website. If you're listening from a computer, you might want to follow along with everything we've posted there. And while you're over on the website, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. So let's talk about Jackie Chan. I was reading some news the other day, and there was a story about a bus explosion that concerned people in London. Turns out the explosion was part of a Jackie Chan movie, and that's when I realized we hadn't done a profile on Jackie Chan yet. So here it is. Jackie Chan was born in 1954 to a very poor family, which makes him 61 now. He was 12 pounds, so big that his mother had to give birth via C-section. His given name is Chan Kong Sang, but we'll talk about where the nickname Jackie came from later. As a kid, he was very energetic and earned the nickname Cannonball. At age six, his parents moved to Australia, so he was enrolled in opera school in Hong Kong, training in singing, acrobatics, acting, and, of course, martial arts. He excelled at all of them and would later find ways to use these skills professionally. Interestingly, he says he was not taught to read or write. He ended up in performance group during his teen years where he met Sammo Hung, and they became close friends even did a few movies together. The two later trained in Hapkido, and Jackie earned his black belt. He's been acting since the 1960s and has over 150 movies to his credit, though you'll only find 127 of them on IMDb. When people think of Jackie Chan's movies, they generally think of his creative choreography and his sense of humor. He stars in the top four all-time martial arts movies, when you look at them as box office successes anyway. He does almost... He does almost all of his own stunts, which has led to some interesting injuries, like the time he fell out of a tree and fractured his skull. He appeared in a number of films before getting stunt work at age 17, working on both Fist of Fury, aka The Chinese Connection, and Enter the Dragon. Of course, those are two famous Bruce Lee films. It was during Enter the Dragon that he says he sustained his most painful injury when Bruce Lee accidentally hit him in the face with his nunchaku. None of the films he starred in did well up until that point, forcing him to take some roles that we won't really get into here. This is, after all, a family show, and if you really want to know, you can find out pretty easily. In 1976, Jackie moved to Australia with his parents and became a construction worker. One of his co-workers, named Jack, looked after him and started calling him Little Jack. From there, it became Jackie, and the name just stuck. He hadn't given up on a film career, though. He starred in a few more movies that did poorly, mostly because everyone was trying to turn him into the new Bruce Lee. There was even a film called New Fist of Fury. But Jackie Chan was not Bruce Lee, and the audience knew it. Those early attempts to turn Jackie Chan into Bruce Lee not only failed, they failed horribly. Jackie actually designed his on-screen fighting style to be the opposite of Lee. Where Bruce Lee would hold his arms wide and move fluidly, Chan keeps his arms tight and fights with choppy movements. The style he developed for his films is mostly based on northern and traditional kung fu. He does claim to have learned some Jeet Kune Do under Bruce Lee during the filming of their movies, though. In 1978, he did a film called Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, and the director, Yuan Wu Ping, gave him complete freedom in doing his own stunt work. People ate it up, and it was the movie that established the comedic kung fu genre in Hong Kong. It did well enough that Jackie Chan went on to star in Drunken Master, the earliest of his films that most of us know here in the United States. His first Hollywood film was The Big Brawl in 1980, but he also played a small role in The Cannonball Run. It was the outtakes as part of the credits from The Cannonball Run that inspired Jackie to do the same thing in his films, and any fan of his movies knows how great those outtakes are. By 1982, he was Hong Kong's top star, with movies outperforming even the records that Bruce Lee set. It was the 1982 film Dragon Lord, also called Dragon Strike, where he started experimenting with stunt action sequences. During his attempts in the 1990s to get back into Hollywood, Sylvester Stallone offered Jackie the role of Simon Phoenix in Demolition Man, 
role that he actually turned down. He said he didn't want to get typecast as a villain, so the role went to Wesley Snipes. Later, he even turned down the role of the king in Jet Li's 2002 film, one of my personal favorites, Hero. It was 1995's Rumble in the Bronx that finally got him the U.S. audience he wanted. Ironically, the movie wasn't made in the Bronx, wasn't even made in the United States. It was filmed in Canada. Personally, this was my first Jackie Chan movie, and it's still my favorite. I remember watching it in the theater and feeling like there was nothing else that could compare for a movie to have humor and credible fight scenes. What could be better for a teenage martial artist? Rumble in the Bronx led to Super Cop in 1996 with Michelle Yeoh, which led to 1998's Rush Hour, which exceeded all expectations and grossed an incredible $130 million. He was brought on board to star in a film called Nosebleed that involved a window washer at the World Trade Center, stopping a terrorist plot. But then the 9-11 attacks happened before the film began production, and, of course, the movie was scrapped. The 2010 remake of The Karate Kid, now, yes, I know, they didn't do karate in the movie, it was a kung fu movie, but we'll just move on from that. That movie was Chan's first dramatic role in an American film. And this is one of my favorite roles for him, not only because he did a great job with the acting, but he managed to make the character his own while still paying homage to Mr. Miyagi, Pat Morita's character in the original. There's a sequel that's been announced, but as of the recording of this episode, the script is still being written, so we don't have any other details. Starting in 1983, Jackie formed a stunt team, the Jackie Chan stunt team, creatively named, right? And that team has choreographed the stunt work he's known for. The team has become so well-known, actually, and effective even, that they do the stunt work for not just Jackie Chan, but most of the other characters in the movies that he stars in. Jackie Chan holds the Guinness World Record for most stunts by a living actor. Now, as great as that is, unfortunately, that distinction has meant that he basically cannot get insurance for his American movies. Most people don't know that Jackie Chan is an accomplished singer. He's an operatically trained vocalist and a prominent pop star in China, having sung on a number of his own albums, 20 in fact, since 1984. He recorded the official countdown song for the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. He often performs the theme songs for his movies, including The Young Master and Police Story. He's sung in Cantonese, Mandarin, Japanese, Taiwanese, and English. I can't speak another language fluently, let alone sing in one. Jackie has multiple honorary degrees and academic titles, despite having received very little formal education. He's actually a faculty member at the School of Hotel and Tourism Management at the Hong Kong Polytechnic Institute, where he teaches tourism management. Despite his achievements, he feels he never received enough education and has actually funded a number of educational facilities worldwide. He's a prolific entrepreneur, owning a clothing line, chain of sushi restaurants, production companies, and movie theaters. But that's not all. There are plans for gyms, chocolates, cookies, and more. He donates some of the profits from each venture to his charitable foundation. Again, really creative names here. The Jackie Chan Charitable Foundation. And that foundation was created in 1988 to give scholarships and other aid to the youth of Hong Kong, as well as victims of natural disasters or illness. What's your favorite Jackie Chan movie? Leave your answer over on the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, in the comment section. This is episode 58. You can also find the show notes, including the transcript from today's episode, as well as the photos and videos that we've posted there. There's a great video with some of his most dramatic injury outtakes, and the background music is even a song he sung. If you want to give us a shout on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. If you want to be a guest on the show, you have a suggestion, or something else, hit us up with the contact form over there. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. You can learn more about our products too over at whistlekick.com. Since you've already listened this far, I know you like the show, so please help us out. Subscribe or download one of the apps so you never miss out in the future. We bring these shows to you twice a week, and while we love the support of your business, the main thing we ask for is a review. If you're an iPhone user, please leave us a review in iTunes. And if you're listening in some other way, please leave us a review or a comment, whatever feels appropriate. Thank you in advance. So, until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.